So it's a, it's a very big portal, and uh, I bet it's going to be soon very used by uh, all the filmmakers who, who do movies that matter. Movies that matter, that's the reason we're here. And Films that matter. I can only speak as a filmmaker. I can also speak as an audience. As a filmmaker, I can tell you, you cannot intend to make a film that matters. You cannot plan to make a film that matters. Because as, a, as an audience, very often you see films and you think, oh, that must be a film that matters. And then you come out and it didn't matter. <laughs> and then you see films you have no idea what they're about and they, you come out and they matter a lot in your life. So you cannot plan a film that matters. But sometimes this miraculous thing happens that a film that is dear to somebody's heart, like the filmmaker, becomes dear to other people's heart and out of a sudden the fact that it matters appears as something that you do together, the audience as well as the film, and that you feel together. So I think the only thing that matters in these miraculous agglomerations of, of happiness and of meaning is that you touched on something that touched the audience and that the audience needed at that moment. And that is luckily something nobody can plan and no big studio can plan, luckily, because they would only make movies that matter. <laughs> and they try. But it's a, it's a little miracle that a movie matters. And in, you can only say it in hindsight why it mattered, because it helped people to live better or to understand a little better how to live and that becomes such a complex question these days and more and more complex that every now and then in a movie for instance the one that you quoted you come out and you have a feeling that you understand life a little better and you see it with other eyes maybe it lasts only an hour sometimes it lasts much longer and that is a movie that matters if it stays with you and uh, luckily, luckily, you cannot plan it. I tried to plan movies that matter. I didn't really, su really succeed. I made movies that I thought that I'm going to be bashed for, and they matter. So you cannot plan it. Uh, it, it, it reminds me that two days ago, with my colleague here from the uh, Animation Day in Cannes, we organized, celebrates, we helped the uh, animators and celebrated their, their, their work. And, and we, we had to give Animation That Matters awards to uh, filmmakers who made animation that we saw uh, brought something. One of them was Iqbal, and he was denouncing uh, kids that work underage at 10 or something. And I thought it was a very good way to tell the message saying it's not it's not good and at the same time it was a funny movie. Can I just interrupt you because I wanted to also say something that Gondaya said what matters because what matters is not the intention they are movie with the greatest intentions being made and they don't fall on the ground and grow fruit and uh, your, your answer was really lovely and my own words for this is that you see the thing that matters not because it's thrown at you, it's because you can discover it. And the films that mattered in my life that I saw were all the films where I can read between the lines and that left a lot of space open for me to for myself discover what mattered. And that is a very rare art today in movies that they don't advertise what matters and then you, you just sit there and you have to say, yes, that matters. That is not the way it works. Yeah, of course. The other question about the European Film Academy that will, in fact, have its 30th birthday this year in Berlin 
was an initiative by 20 filmmakers from all over Europe. We're talking in Europe when there was still a wall and was still a Cold War. And a couple of years later, we had a united Europe. And we all realized 30 years ago that we needed to be closer together and we needed to be united because if ever there was something like European cinema, and we all believed that existed, but it was not documented in any form of reunion or club or academy. So we realized we were a little late. The Americans had the idea 50 years earlier, and we founded the European Film Academy 30 years ago. And Ingmar Bergman was our first president, and I now have the heavy duty responsibility to be the president of it and uh, happy that we've lasted 30 years and I think happy that the Academy helped a lot to really get the idea, promote the idea that European cinema was not just an abstract idea but is something very real and now is represented by three and a half thousand filmmakers all over Europe in the widest sense possible. We go we have Israeli and Palestinian filmmakers as our members and we go way into into Kazakhstan and God knows all these pe people who in the widest sense make European cinema. Thank you. The question was about virtual reality and she's involved in a project. I've tried it, yes. I'm not sure it's a great medium for storytelling. Maybe somebody will prove the opposite. And I have a... I like technology. I like all new technology. I like 3D when it came up. Virtual reality has for me one default. It makes people a little lonelier. And I once found myself in a screening room with lots of people seeing the same film. And I must say, I was so alone there and I started to bump into my neighbor because I turned this way and he turned this way. It was not a pleasant experience. I was so alone, I went out afterwards and I wanted to, to be with people instead of in a room with lots of people who were alone. So my only, my, the only drawback of this technology is makes you more alone than ever before. And I think cinema is really a medium that makes us feel together. And it's a social experience. And virtual reality, unfortunately, so far is not a social experience. Two, three minutes.